you know, uh, for this segment, we have uh, Regina Brancato Dandedale. She is an imposter syndrome expert and a master practitioner in neuro linguistic programming. That's quite a, a mouthful, and I'm just looking to her to uh, you know help us understand this whole uh, aspect. Uh, and she has her own practice, uh, Regina uh, Hy Hypnotherapy. Uh, Regina was born in Brazil, a country that even today is extremely patriarchal. And she was very lucky to have had a father who encouraged her to go to university and become a professional. However, at the very beginning of her professional life, she felt intimidated by the male dominant environment that she used to work at and therefore made herself invincible, you know, invisible and voiceless. But then she decided to address this. She sought appropriate help, overcame her fears and insecurities. And this is what she has to say to her audience today. I am no wonder woman and I'm quoting her here. I am no wonder woman. I am just like you. If I could overcome my fears and insecurities, if I found strength and courage to show up, speak up and succeed, so can you. So yeah, this is just wonderful. Uh, you know, uh, Regina, uh, mental health, especially in the science community is a very and one such aspect of mental health is imposter syndrome and although it is more common mm -hmm. than we would like to think it is but it isn't addressed mm -hmm. enough you know so we are absolutely uh, glad to have you here with us and we're looking forward to having you uh, speak you know so thank you so much i'm going to switch off my uh, video and audio hand over the stage to you and please let me know if you need anything i'm right here Thank you. Thank you. So, first of all, I'd like to say that I was so thrilled when Piali got in touch with me and invited me to talk to you about what I am absolutely passionate about, which is emotion. Um, and it is an honor and privilege to be here addressing it. It is this kind of conferences with multiple disciplines to me is the way forward. It's a collaboration and it's, it's what um, connect us and not separate us. And I think it's high time that we start connecting with each other instead of creating division, instead of us and them situation. I also would, would like to say that I love the quote, nothing in science has any value if it's not communicated. Can I just say that, as Piali said, I, 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 I am a, a, an NLP practitioner, but I also went to university in my previous life. I used to be a teacher and linguistic was the, one of the main subjects, particularly in communication. So I think that nothing has any value if it's not communicated. One of the principles of linguistic is the responsibility for communications lie with the person doing the communicating, the communication. So as the teacher, or if I am in front of a camera, or like I am here, or in front of an office, it's my responsibility to communicate with you in a way that all of you understand. And if I don't do it. If I notice there is one person that can't quite grasp the message, I need then to change and adapt until this person uh, communicates. So that when you are doing the communication in front of how many people, you the first thing you need to do is to leave your ego at home. And it's to be humble, to be privileged and to be honored that you are able to share your ideas, bearing in mind that you all have something to say, we all have a voice and we all have the right to use it. So before I start talking about uh, the imposter syndrome, I, I, whenever I give a workshop, a masterclass or an app, wherever I present to any audience, I like I ask this audience or you guys as much as you can to leave expectation at arm's length, at a side. The reason being is that when, when we expect something, 
we create preconcepted ideas on how we are supposed to feel, what we are supposed to look for, and that may limit your experience, especially in my case, that I'm talking about um, emotions. We all have emotions, we all feel them, we can't help them. It's part of who we are. It's what makes us, us. And emotions are unconscious. So something happens in the world out there that triggers an emotion. Of course, it is much, it is wonderful when whatever happens trigger joy, happiness, and love. And you can't help yourself. So imagine that you look at a person and immediately you feel something and you notice, you know that you're falling in love with the person. But then, then you notice that you, you uh, the act of falling in love eventually becomes love. So the emotions go high and then eventually it subsizes a little and it becomes, I, I like to think, balanced, that it, it becomes in sync with your life. So the act of falling in love and then you fall and then you find love. Um, it's not so nice when you feel frustrated, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, stress, a little bit of anxiety, and we know and worried. Well, unfortunately, the last part, the, the, the last two years have been uh, challenging to say the least. And we, we don't know what's going to happen. The pandemic has turned our lives upside down. There was a lot, a lot has changed. And there is a constant sense of worry because we don't know what's going to happen. In my case, I was extremely worried, worried sick because my mother is a 90 year old lady with dementia. She had COVID. She's vaccinated and fortunately it was she was fine. She didn't have to go to the hospital. So I was worried, extremely worried. It peaked. I was really sick, worried sick about her. Then, because she is fine, I found my balance. Of course, I'm still worried because she's 90 years old and I don't know. Nobody knows if she will have any collateral or side effect or not. But at the moment, she is fine. And the way you, you find your balance with your emotion is not ignoring them just because it's bad refusing to feel refusing to see to feel causes huge problem because it means that you are dissociated of emotion you stepped out of that body i don't want that and that causes problem because you lose your identity so the way you find your balance is to focus in every now moment be aware of what's going on that, but focus on your every now moment, because it is in the now moment that you can take action, like I did with my mother, constantly in touch with the doctor, constantly in touch with her carers. She is at home, she has carers, being a bit of a pain because it was phone calls every minute that nobody did anything. But that's the only time that you can take any actions in any, under any circumstances in the now moment. It's not yesterday, certainly not tomorrow, but it's in the now moment. It's in the now moment that you find your balance. Um, so I am here to talk about imposter syndrome. When Piali introduced me, it was, I had imposter syndrome when she said that I felt intimidated working a world's man. I, I, my, I specialize in adult education, teaching English and uh, Portuguese, Portuguese for foreigners and incorporation. In those days, in the 80s, 90s, it was, well, it is still very much a man's world in Brazil. And they literally, I felt like I didn't belong. So I, and I made myself invisible because I felt I don't, I have nothing to say. Why am I here? 
I am stupid, I am ignorant, they will learn nothing from me, I felt a fraud. And this, this, these are some characteristics of uh, imposter syndrome. You pay attention to the other, so these guys are much better than I do. Comparing, constantly comparing yourself to the other. Um, and my achievements meant nothing. I was invited to teach. I did the work. I, it was hard. I worked hard to specialize in language, in communication. Didn't matter. What mattered was they are better than me. What am I doing here? I'm a fraud. And then I had the need to, to, in my head, that the only way I succeed in a man's world is to become a man, to behave like a man. Well, I don't know how man behaves. So what happened was I became like a crazy woman. I behaved like a crazy woman. I was wearing very masculine clothes and became extremely aggressive and shouting like a crazy woman. So I, instead of turning into a man, I turned into a clown. I made a fool of myself, which made things even worse. That's when then I became invisible and voiceless. And that's when I, I, I sought help to get rid of it. And as Piali said, I am not as much as I love to think that I am a goddess and a wonder woman, I'm not. I'm just like any of you. And if I could do it, so can you. So imposter syndrome um, is, is, is like that. Is feel, it is the feeling that you dog is the feeling that you know, and then you have to become somebody else or something else that you don't know to succeed. And it's the constantly worrying that you will be caught. Um, so let me give you two examples apart from mine. One of them happened Friday gone, which was incredible, which it was a coincidence, if you believe in coincidence. It was a young, a young lady, a young solicitor, family law. Um, she was born in Italy. She has a, a, a law degree by the University of Bologna. Then she decided to move to the UK and because the laws, the European law, family law are, is different from the British family law, she had to do what uh, she had to validate her diploma. So another three years of law school. She done that and then she went to Australia to work as a solicitor. In Australia, the, the, the family law is, uh, it is similar to the British family law. She spent some time in, in Australia and went back to the UK and got hired by a law firm because of her understanding and knowledge of both Italian family law and European family law and British. And on top of that, she speaks Italian and she understands French. So she, she is of a great value to the family, to, to the firm, because she can help, or, uh, help um, not only foreigners divorcing, getting divorced in the UK, but British uh, citizens who have property abroad and are getting divorced. The thing is, when she came talk to me, she said to me, she will never succeed in the UK as a solicitor because she speaks English with an accent. Well, who doesn't? And because she speaks single in the, with an accent, she convinced herself that she is not good enough for the British, that she needs to become British. And I'm not talking about taking the, the nationality, the British nationality, becoming British like I wanted to become a man to succeed. Of course, this will never happen because she's not British. She is Italian. So she goes to the office and she says, I don't belong and I become another person. And I know I am not that person. Her achievements means absolutely nothing. She knows why she was, she was hired. She knows that she helps people because she knows that she had success. It doesn't matter. What matters is that she, for her to succeed in the UK, she needs to become British, be British, behave like the British, incorporate the British, whatever, soul. 
That is one case. The other case was years before her, a British guy who bought into the cultural absurdity as like uh, fake until you make it. When I first came across fake until you make it, fake until you make it is popular in, in, in the UK, extremely popular, popular in the United States, getting a bit popular, unfortunately, in Brazil. So the, fake, the, the principle of fake until you make it is when you start a job or when you start anything that it's outside your comfort zone or it's new to you and you feel a bit insecure, you feel a bit, you, you have a little bit of self-doubt, you need to fake confidence and security until you get there, until you convince everybody that you are good at what you do. So when I first heard this, I, I at a marketing event, uh, soon I, when I was about to set up uh, my, my business, I said, well, hang on a minute. You start your new career with, in a negative note, because fake, what are you saying to yourself that you are a fraud? The, completely negative. And I thought nobody will buy this. Nobody in, in, in their you know, sane mind will, will buy into this stupid culture that you have to fake until you make it. And once you make it, then you can be yourself. Well, how do you know you make it? And how can you be yourself if, if you, for, you know, it may, it may take a while until you make it. And in, during this period, you're telling yourself that you are a fraud. So I thought that nobody would buy into this. Well, I was wrong because this guy, a very competent finance guy working in love, what his job, very good at what at his job, bought into this culture. He, he's a hedge fund uh, guy and bought into the culture, the culture that he had to fake until he made it. Well, the, the, the result of that is that he used to wake up in the middle of the night with severe panic attack that he would be discovered, that people would discover that he was a fraud, that he knew nothing of finance, even though he was extremely successful within two years, he had a, he still has a very successful career. So the British guy and the Italian uh, lady have, even though they are years apart and nothing to do with each other, doing com co two completely different things, have one thing in common, one thing in common. They created the, in themselves a part. You know what you've created a part, or we know when somebody has created a part within themselves, when they say to you, or when you say to yourself, oh, you see, I mean two minds. I cannot decide because a part of me wants this and the, a part of me wants the other. And the parts are always in conflict. And as human beings, we cannot function in parts. We function as a whole. So these two people created a part and they lived. The, 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 the solicitor is still living with the part we had a first conversation. I hope she agrees to work with me. The guy got rid of the part. And, and they got rid of the part. Well, the guy got rid of the part, but even the, 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 the Italian solicitor starts thinking about shifting the mindset for, uh, because of what I told her and because of what I'm gonna tell you right now. The human brain, is designed to adapt and learn. And this is a fact. But we adapt and learn in different ways. We receive a lot of information from the world out there. It's something like 2 billion bits of information per second. And we receive this information using through our five senses. That's how we internalize this information. Everything we see, everything we hear, everything we smell, 
everything we taste and everything we feel gets into our brain, our mind from the world. And the and and they the reason they it it this happens is for us to process the information, to make meaning to understand and to interpret this information and to select what we are going to use because our brain does not have the capacity to assimilate two billion bits of information per second. And we do it automatically, we are not thinking. And when we do things automatically without thinking, it is unconscious. On top of this, this process of using our five senses to decodify information, uh, um, we have our values. Values are the most important thing a human being or we have. Values guide us to choose what to do and what not to do. And once we make the choice, we do not change our mind. So we, it is, we do not do anything that goes against our values. We get our values primarily from our parents and then from our extended family. And then we get the values also from the community we were born into. We get our values from our close friends, from our teachers and our mentors, for people we look up to. And we, got, we get our values from our faith, whatever religion we follow. I have to say that there is no such thing as wrong or right values values are different and different is not synonymous of right and wrong different is not synonymous of good or bad it's just different after your values what influences this the, 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 this interpretation of this information is also our beliefs beliefs are what we hold to be true beliefs are flexible because we can change beliefs you, you know we what used to be true two years ago it's not true anymore so we are working um from home we are homeschooling and we are using more um the internet which is not a bad thing because it's a great opportunity for us to connect with the world so here i am sitting in Brazil communicating with you, even though I am spending time with my mother, but I live in London. I find it fascinating. So when 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 you look back to the to reality, and this happens at a blink of an eye. So when you blink an eye and you open your eye again, the reality you see reality from a different perspective, you see reality from a different perception, you see reality from a different eyes. So the reality becomes your reality because your reality is different from mine. The way you see your reality, the, the way you navigate your reality is different from mine. And it's not because I am a foreigner. I am not from India. It's because I am a human being. The proof of that, I'm going to give you some tangible examples, very basic examples. Taste. We have different tastes. We like certain foods, we don't like others. T different taste in music, different taste in, in clothes. And even though we may shop at the same shop, we see details that we make what we are wearing our own. That we make recognize it recognizable for our, our lifestyle. We have a style, a style um, to present, a style to present ourselves, a style to present like I am presenting, and we are recognizable for our style. And, and I think it's safe to say that all of us have a similar routine. We wake up in the morning and we have responsibilities. We go to work and then we come home we either have family or not, but we re relax. And over the weekend, we connect with people and we do things and we try to forget work. This is true to most of us, but the way we do it is different. 
some people have hobbies, others don't. So when you when you understand that, when you are aware of that, when your mindset shifts to that premise, premise that the mind adapt and learn, that we we see the world through different eyes. We then the the notion of comparing yourself to the other becomes, I dare say, irrelevant. We are unique in our own way. So instead of looking to the other, because we are curious, instead of looking at the other with comparing yourself, he's better than me or she's better than me, look at them with curiosity because sometimes they are doing things that we think it's better, the way of doing things. So you go down, you go there and ask. If you know the person, ask. Ask how, how they do things. And you know very well that you will adapt how they do it to, your, to make it your own. So it won't be copying, you, because you can't copy. Because if you may feel uncomfortable the way they do things, so you adapt to your way of doing it. So even though it's their way of doing things, when it comes to you, you create a new way of doing things. And, and sometimes you improve their way of doing things. So it becomes, we make it naturally and unconsciously our own. It is also when you, when you shift to this mindset, when you look to the other person, knowing that they are going through the same process, to the same unconscious process, you, it, then you start rethinking judgment. Judging the person for, 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 for their behavior, for who they are, just judging the person in a good way or a bad way just because they do things in a different way. They can't help it as we can't help ourselves. It is unconscious. This mindset also gives you uh, clarity and gives you flexibility. So we clarify flexibility when you are dealing with the other, with connecting with people. You then choose to be how flexible can you be within your values and your beliefs. If you are, if you, if you can go the extra mile. And also how flexible you can be with your boundaries. And it is always your choice and it is always within your values. So um, it is a huge advantage to, to shift the mindset to, uh, to understand that we are unique in our own way and we do things in different ways. Another uh, um, another thing to consider is that because we do this process and we are not thinking, it is unconscious. It is safe to say that all learning is unconscious. Literally, all learning is unconscious. You know that because from the moment you are born to the moment you, you, you go to school for the first time at what, five, four, five years old, you already know quite a lot. You know how to speak, you know how to negotiate your reality, your little world, you know how you understand roughly, even though you are not, you don't know how, but you understand the politics of interrelationship with mom and dad. You know how to please them and you know when they are not very pleased. You know that it's very well for them to say no to you when to keep you safe when you when when they know you're going to be when you're going to hurt yourself because you know we are curious but but when you look up to them at the age of whatever a time that we don't remember you look up to them and like when i say no to them mm you know um you have you know curiosity because you experiment 
and you know how to try things, to experiment things. You know how to stand up in your in in your little wobbly legs to try to attempt to give your first steps. You know how to fall, but you have the courage to stand up again and to keep going until you walk, regardless if you perfect the art of walking or not, you keep going until you get what you want. You know that before you go to school. So, and that is a huge achievement, a huge achievement. It is a big deal. Along our lives, when we go to school, and even when we go to school to learn how to write, we, we can speak. We're still learning unconscious because the world is happening around us. So we're still hearing things in our peripheral. We still sense somebody behind us and chatting, even when we are focusing on the subject matter. So much so that when you hear something and you say, oh, I've heard that before, or, oh, I've seen that before. And then you go there there in your unconscious mind to get their memory because the unconscious mind is a huge data bank of our memories, even the memories we don't remember. So you, you try to access. The unconscious mind is our own private search engine. It's our own private Google. Oh, I need to look for that memory. Where, where, where is that? So what you, and then for some reason, some people say to themselves, well, I'm an adult now, so I, you know, I can't be, I lost my curiosity or, or I lost my motivation. How? How can you lose something that you were born with? You didn't lose it. You buried it inside. And if you pay attention, it is there. With this, um, so as learning is unconscious, you learn from everybody. You learn from the world. You learn from your five senses. You learn from your teachers. You learn from your friends and colleagues, but you also learn from yourself. And more often than not, we are not very good teachers to ourselves. The words we use to ourselves to describe ourselves or the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves may not be very good. And that's when all the problems um, happen. The brain does not know the difference between true or false. Whatever you say to yourself, your mind believes you. You will not have a philosophical, metaphysical conversation with your mind. So if you say to yourself, I'm not good enough, I'm rubbish, I'm an idiot. I, I, I cannot succeed, nothing I do is right. Your brain will believe you. At the same, but in the same sentence, you can say to yourself, I'm good at what I do, I'm awesome at what I do. I keep going till I get what I want. I am really wonderful and I feel great about myself, it's the same thing. The brain will believe you. It's the language that we use to describe yourself. Um, we are very, very careful to the, to the language we use when we are talking to the other, particularly if you have children or we're talking to children. We extremely care what we say to them. We avoid swearing or bad words because we lead by example. When we are dealing with your colleagues or with clients, we are very, very careful. Not so careful when we are talking about ourselves to ourselves. Um, professor Noam, Noam Chomsky, a professor of linguistics at the University of Chicago, came developed this theory that every language has two structures. The surface structure of a language is what I'm doing now, talking to you, uh, explaining, exposing my point of view. You don't have to agree or disagree with me, but I'm just talking and my emotions are balanced in neutral, just in exposing my ideas. 
And then there is the deep stru structure of the same language. And the deep, deep structure is directly connected with our emotions. And the example is when we talk about highly abstract notions, for example, emotions. So if I, if I mention to you, if I say the word joy, you know the, 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 the dictionary meaning of joy. You know what it means, you understand joy. What you don't know is that how I feel my joy which is different from how you feel your joy. So joy has an emo a different emotional value to me than, every than anybody else or than, than everybody. And I'll give you an example of what happened to me. I, when I was still in Brazil working as a teacher, I got the job I wanted and I was so, it was more than job. I was excited. I was jumping up and down. I was smiling my cheek was hurting her couldn't stop her mind and I couldn't talk because gosh that was the best thing ever I could at that time I could have died I thought I died and gone to heaven I and I couldn't contain the joy inside of me it was too much so I decided to pick up the phone and call my brother and share it with him of course he was at work so I told him I got the job. It is wonderful. It is amazing. I was really shouting. So happy I was. And my brother was at work. He said, that is excellent, Regina. But at the moment, I'm very, very busy. I'll call you back. I put the phone down. I was like, what? So I went from extremely happy to what is going on? What on earth? Why did he do that? Because of course he was happy for me, but he was not feeling it. He was at a meeting. He was very busy. I didn't know then anything about surface structure or deep structure. So what did I do? I called him back, didn't I? Because, you know, I was born in Brazil and I'm a product of Italian immigrants. So it's a bit of feisty combination and I'm married to a very British man. Ooh. Anyway, I called my brother back, didn't I? And then it was, you don't care if I'm happy or not. You do not care if I drop dead. The, maybe you are even relieved if I'm not in your life anymore. Okay, okay, I admit it was a bit dramatic. And he was like, I do care, I do love you, but I'm still busy, goodbye, boom which did not make matters worse. So that is, that, is, that is what happened. He was happy for me, but he was not feeling my job. The same thing happens when with love. Oh, you don't love me anymore because you don't, because you don't look at me when I talk to you. Well, yes, I do love you. And I can look at you when, I, when you're talking to me. So the way we love is different from the other. And that can cause problems. But if you get that, that we are all different, then it really changes the relationship, the dynamics of any relationship. So um, you may be wondering that this mindset shift is all very well, but it's easier said than done. It's not that simple. It doesn't happen like, okay, let's, let's do it. No, it's not. The process is simple. It's for you to be aware of what you're saying to yourself, to be, to be aware that everybody go, everybody goes through the same process of seeing the world through different eyes of navigate their reality in different ways. What required is a lot of awareness and you need to pay attention of what, how you're dealing with the other. And it takes time. So it's not difficult or complicated. It's not unnatural. It requires attention. But then you know how long it takes for you to do things unconscious, for, for a habit to really settle in. You know that. We don't remember. But think about what you do in the morning. 
when you start your routine. You go to the bathroom and you wash your face and you brush your teeth. But you, you, you didn't know, you know it now, but you didn't know it when your parents start teaching you to brush your teeth. And I can guarantee you it was a, not a, a one-off. It was brush your teeth, 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 until you got the message. Because it was the same thing with homework. Do your homework, do your homework, do your homework, until you know that you have to do your homework. Otherwise, it would be do your homework, do your homework, do your homework, you know. Go to work, go to work, go to work. There are some days that it happens to everybody that we understand the meaning of gravity. And there are some days that, oh, please don't, God, Lord, I don't want to get out of bed. And then the voice in your head, go to work, go to work, go to work, get up, get up, get up, get up, and you do it. It's the same process. Be aware, pay attention to what you're saying to yourself, especially to the stories you're telling yourself about yourself. Especially that. And then change the narrative. Um, only you can change the narrative because I don't know what you're thinking right now. I like to think that you are paying attention. I like to think that you, everything I say is of value and everything I say, it's important. This is me thinking I am the best thing that's ever happened to the world. I'm a little bit dramatic, as you may have noticed. But I, the reality is that I don't know. I don't know whether you're still with me or your mind is wandering. So that is what requires for you to, until the, the habit of shifting the mindset is there. And then you do that automatically. Um, so I, I don't know if, if, uh, you have any questions you want to interrupt me or you are tired of my voice or if you want to, if you want, if you have any questions, if you're still with me, <laughs> I don't think, uh, we are tired of your voice. I was just, uh, you know, like you're a wonderful orator, Regina. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah, I absolutely, uh, you know, I'm loving the quirky notes that you're bringing it into, uh, you know, bringing in, <laughs> <laughs> laughing in the yeah. smile. We need to yeah. have fun. It's not yeah. so serious. We need to have fun. If it's yeah. if there is if there aren't any questions, and if 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 you guys agree, I would like to give you a little exercise just to show you how powerful we are. And there is no such thing as, you know, I can't do it. Because you know from childhood that we never gave up until you got what we want. And it is a limiting belief when we think that we lost curiosity, we lost motivation, we, we lost this drive. Where did you lose this thing? Where? In the supermarket or in a park? Where? No, it's inside. It's, it's for some reason we decided that, no, we are adults now, we can't be curious because, you know, responsibility. And sometimes some people have lost their sense of humor completely. You can't say, you can't joke, you can't say anything. That is why I like to have fun. Yeah. Lighten up, you know, make things that it is possible because you have everything you need inside of you. So if you agree and if you are willing to do this exercise, it is interesting, it's fun. Again, do not expect anything. There is no right and wrong. You feel whatever you feel, notice whatever you notice and just enjoy the journey if it's all right. Yeah? Yeah, I think, uh, can we have some thumbs ups uh, so we can begin with the exercise? Okay, great, great, great. Oh, cool. So yeah. as I as I as I said to uh, to you, the the unconscious mind is has all our memories, even the memories that we don't know. So I'm gonna ask, and I like to think of, and and immediately when we think of a memory, it triggers an emotion. So what I like 
ask you to do is to think, to, to choose a memory of a, a, an achievement, an achievement that made, they made, that made you proud, an achievement that when we think about it, makes you smile right now. And, and makes you proud right now, regardless of what you consider, whether you consider it a big achievement or a, a small achievement. It can be an achievement for childhood, your first gift or your first birthday present. It'd be an achievement when you graduated, anything that, make, that has made you proud and that you were smiling right now. I know you have it right now because the unconscious mind is very quick. It's quicker than Google, trust me, because the unconscious mind has no internet interference. And I want you to, as, when you have this achievement, I want you to change, to, to close, your, close your eyes, please. And think about this memory. I like to think, to, to, uh, think of memories as pictures. I like to look at memories as, as I am looking into a photograph. So I, if that is comfortable for you, I want you to do the same. Look at this memory that makes you, still makes you smile and still makes you feel proud of yourself for that achievement. Look at this memory as you are looking at a picture. And I want you to, and when you're looking at a picture, of, a, of, of a, a good memory, you notice that there is no tension on your face. You're not, you know, straining your eyes. There is, you're not frowning. You are completely relaxed. And when we relax our face, the easiest muscle in the body to relax are the muscles around our, our eyes. And when we relax the body, the, our eyes, automatically the whole body relax. So there is no tension because you are looking at a picture of an achievement that makes you still makes you proud still makes you happy and you and you are smiling right now now we're looking at this picture perhaps we perhaps we, you can make this picture better than it is or than it is than it already is so notice if there are if the picture is is, is a color has colors in it, and perhaps you want to make the, the colors a bit brighter. Or perhaps not. It is your picture, it is your memory. So whatever makes you feel even better than you are already feeling. Or perhaps you are a retro kind of person and you prefer the picture to be black and white. See how you feel. See how the picture looks black and white or colored it's your choice it's your picture it's your memory and you are still smiling perhaps the picture looks better with a frame and then you choose your favorite frame or perhaps it's better panoramic perhaps it's it's it, it the picture looks better with uh, moving or still Again, it is your picture, you choose, you are in charge. Perhaps your picture looks better 3D or flat. And perhaps there is some background soothing sound, your favorite song or any sound that is soothing to you. Or perhaps you prefer the sound of silence when you look at the picture. Perhaps you see yourself in the picture. Perhaps you are in the picture. That makes it even better than it already is. Or perhaps you are not in the picture and it's better for you if you're looking at the picture through your own eyes. And now that you've changed this picture, I want you to see in front of you a bubble and put the picture in the bubble with your achievement and the bubble is now hovering on top of your head and very slowly I want you to put the bubble 
inside your head, in the center of your head, in the center of your brain, the brain that makes meaning and what this picture and this achievement represent, the meaning of your achievement is I can achieve anything I want, I can do anything I want, I can learn, I can adapt and I can change wherever change is necessary. That is the meaning of that picture in your brain. And as you stay that with the meaning, as the picture goes down at your eye level, and then you will see every opportunity that, your, that the brain creates for you. You will see coincidence, you will see synchronicities, and you will choose to adapt, to act on them, on them or not. And as you going down to your ear level, you will hear you say to yourself, I can achieve anything I want, I can adapt, I can learn, and I can change whenever change is necessary. And you will hear loud and clear. Perhaps you need to make some adjustments, you have to put the volume up a little bit, or the volume down, but it is clear what you hear. And that is as, as the bubble goes down, it, it stops at the center of your chest, in your heart. There, the picture means kindness to you first, compassion, self-belief, self-love, self-respect, self-esteem, self-confidence to achieve whatever you want to achieve, to change, to adapt, to learn. And you stay with that. Notice how you feel. You are already smiling just thinking of looking at the picture. You feel also pride for yourself because you achieved that. And if you achieve that, you can achieve anything. And stay with that a minute. And now the picture goes down to your stomach. And in the stomach, the meaning is courage. Courage to make mistakes, courage to correct the mistakes, courage to learn, courage to adapt, courage to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. You also find courage to fall and courage to stand up, as you remember very well doing. Courage to keep going until you achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. Courage to say yes, courage to say no, courage to change your mind. And you stay there. Still smiling, still feeling proud. It's your picture. And now I want you to take the picture to your mind with this courage and with the kindness of your heart. And notice how you feel. Notice the difference. And then take the picture back to your stomach from the information you got from your mind and notice what you notice. Is there any difference? It's the same. It's your picture. And then take this picture to your heart with all the information from the mind and the stomach, it's all in your heart, to include the information, to connect with the information from your, your heart so you become at one with your mind, with your stomach, with your heart, you are at one. And staying there, you know not the knowing that you learn from the books. It's the knowing, the intuitive knowing, the certainty, the knowing that you can't explain. But you know. You know, you know, you know. You know. You know that you can get and achieve anything you want. Because everything starts within you. Look to yourself first, and then look to the world. And then, when you're, happy, when you're ready, open your eyes. So how did that go? It may take a while, a while but the, the, it's just to show you how powerful you are, because you improved that picture and it is there. All you have to do whenever life happens in a way that it's not really how you want it, 
is to think about it, whatever you want to think about in your mind, in your heart, or in your stomach, it's there. I cannot, and nobody can change that or take that from you. Nobody, nobody. And I'd like to finish to say, to remember that everything starts within you. So thank you guys for having me. I hope you enjoyed it.